Hey everyone, Patrick here again with uh, another lightsaber review. This time of uh, Corbant's uh, 2.5 Graflex kit from Randy Johnson. And what this means is that my drama with 89 Sabres has come to an end. Um, they gave me a refund off uh, when I did a uh, PayPal dispute. And I have to cancel my order because I knew I wasn't going to have it before I moved. And I... Still wanted my graphics kit, so I got this one from uh, Corban. And I have to say, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, probably not as excited about it as I should be. It was, it, it's more a feeling of relief that I just I finally have it after the drama with uh, 89 Sabres, which is a shame because the products are really good. Um, I just won't purchase from them uh, in the future. Unless they seriously uh, fix their customer service issues, and I see that in the community, and then I might consider making a purchase from them again. But at this point in time, it's uh, it's not going to happen. <clears throat> so going on to this kit, I'm going to go over the components and the two bags. You get one for Empire Strikes Back and one for A New Hope. And then I'll go over the overall flash gun. And then I'll do my final thoughts. So let's start with the Empire Strikes Back uh, components. Starting, you get this Cobalt D-Ring, which is very nice. Um, come on, camera. My camera's being stupid. Um, there it goes. Um, this is actually a chrome finish on the Cobalt D-Ring. Uh, it should be more of a satin uh, brush finish, but I personally, I'm digging the chrome. I'm going to keep the chrome. I like it. I'm not going to swap that out when I do my accuracy mods. Um, so that's pretty nice. Um, if you're like me and you don't really mind the chrome, then it's perfectly fine. It uses two little hex screws to, uh, bolt it down to the pommel cap. However, uh, cool little tidbit. If you plan on like doing what I'm going to do and get like the blank plate to cover this with, that blank plate still allows the sound holes underneath the cobalt, but uh, if you buy the blank plate from uh, the uh, from Wanawanga or Skywampa on Etsy, they also sell rivet screws for the cobalt. So they look like rivets, but they uh, thread in and thread out like a screw, and those are vented for sound. So you can have your two holes for sound and then your two under for sound, so you can have that plate and not lose any of your uh, sound capabilities, which I thought is pretty cool. So I'll be doing that. Going on to your grips for the uh, Empire Strikes Back, you get your six notched grips that come with little uh, hex screws. Everything on this uh, hilt, by the way, uses hex screws. It doesn't use the accurate screws or the ac accurate rivets. Um, I, that personally really doesn't bother me. The only ones I'm going to upgrade are the cobalt ones. The uh, I don't mind the hex screws on the uh, grips. If uh, I was do if I was gonna go uber accurate with Empire Strikes Back, they should be uh, cross tip screws, or if you're doing Force Awaken, they should be rivets. But these are fine; they look fine. I don't mind them. The grips are really easy to put on there. They have little notches where the screws go, and even the new Hope side has the uh, little holes in the aluminum hilt, so you can have an easier time aligning your grips. Where is the one? Uh, but be careful because they, they can still swivel a little bit. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this middle one here in line with the uh, opposite side of the D-ring is just a little bit off center, but not too bad. Um, but yeah, the grips feel very nice. They're sturdy plastic. Um, no, they're, they're perfectly fine. And that's where I need to note that the only plastic components in this hilt is the grips and your bubble strip or your circuit card, whatever you're going to put in your clamp. Everything else is metal, which is very nice. And then the final thing for the, uh, oh no, I got to talk about the clip. Um, the circuit card, the stock circuit card that you get, it's nice. It serves its purpose. It looks fine. Um, I will be upgrading that though for a more accurate Empire Strikes Back one. But as is, there's nothing inherently wrong with this circuit card. Um, the quality is great. It looks great. And it's already set up with tactile activation in mind um, for the clamp. Um, you can upgrade if you want. They're pretty inexpensive to upgrade to a more accurate circuit card from Skywampa or Watawanga. Um, Sloth Furnace has some really nice ones. I just can't justify $42 for a card. 
but it's easy to make some of these modifications if you want. But I see nothing inherently wrong with the stock uh, circuit card. And then your final thing in the Empire Strikes Back setup is this additional red button. This button ha is meant to serve as blade retention. So it has, uh, it screws in with its little screw. Whereas the button behind the bunny ears uh, threads in at the base of the button um, like a traditional graphics button. Whereas this one is meant to serve, uh, serve as blade retention. You can, however, modify this to where either button could be your activation or auxiliary. There are ways to do it. It's just a little tricky with this bomb button. Um, I won't be doing that. That'll just be a dummy button on mine, and I'll be having an activation on my primary button behind the bunny ears here. But yeah, that's all I really have to say for the Empire Strikes Back uh, components. They're all really nice. And if you take away the red bun and you put in a glass eye, you have the sequel trilogy set up from Force Awakens and Last Jedi. So it, it's that bag's really nice. I'm pretty happy with everything that comes in it. Going on to the A New Hope bag. So starting out, you get seven regular grips with no notches, which are accurate to New Hope. And, there, and once again, the groups are perfectly fine. There's nothing really special about them. Uh, they look nice. They feel nice. They feel uh, pretty good quality. Then you have your uh, bubble strip, which, uh, yeah, nothing wrong with it. Uh, it looks almost identical to the one on my Roman's prop saber. So, I mean, I mean, what can I say about the bubble strip? It looks like a bubble strip. <laughs> uh, it looks fairly accurate, and I see nothing wrong with it. Getting to the final two components, though, this is where I have issues with the New Hope bag. Um, they don't affect me because this is not the setup I'm doing, but if you want an accurate A New Hope, these two components you're going to have to swap out, starting with the D-ring. Dear God, do I hate when people put this D-ring on their A New Hope setups. It's not accurate to the film at all. This D-ring, uh, the actual ring itself, is actually bigger than the Cobalt D-ring in terms of size and thickness. I mean, look at that. And the New Hope one should be really small and pretty dainty and meant to where it can sit perfectly in the dead center of your uh, pommel. This is way too big. Um, jiggles around way too much. Uh, I put it on my hilt just to see what it looks like in person and it just doesn't match the rest of the hilt. Um, so if you want an accurate a New Hope style D-ring, be prepared to pay for it. They're not cheap. Um, I think the cheapest one I saw was like $44. Uh, I don't know if there's cheaper alternatives out there. I didn't do too much of digging for it since I don't really need one. But yeah, they're not easy to get the style of D-ring for a new hope that you need. So it's a shame. I feel like Corban by this point in time, that should have been upgraded. It, I don't see it being that hard to just shrink the D-ring down and make it easier to center on your uh, pommel. But that's all I have to say about the D-ring for A New Hope. And then you get your glass eye, or in this case, your metal eye, your chromed out metal eye there, which is horribly inaccurate to both A New Hope and The Force Awakens and Last Jedi. Um, now, if you're doing A New Hope, it's supposed to be silver and ridged and have a glass eye. I don't like this metal. It doesn't look right. And this is uh, meant to have blade retention in mind. Uh, if you're doing Force Awakens, Last Jedi, uh, then you're really out of luck because it should be raised a little bit, it should be smooth, it should be uh, brass with the glass eye in the center. So if you're doing A New Hope or a Sequel Trilogy with Graphlexes, you are going to have to uh, buy a new glass eye unless you're okay with this chromed out looking one, which I I personally think is ugly. Um once again, this is another thing I think Corbanth by this point in time in the game should have upgraded. Um, there, there, there should be no reason for uh, these components to still be inaccurate the way they are. Once again, they don't affect me. Everything that I needed was perfectly fine. But if you're doing, you know, New Hope or Sequel Trilogy, that's even more stuff you gotta do accuracy mods on, which can be a little bit, a little bit annoying. You gotta spend a little bit more money. Um, before I go into the main hill, I do want to talk about the red button activation switches. 
Um, they have been changed since the 2.0s. Um, you still have your little tactile switches, two of them, uh, nothing too special. But the buttons are no longer anodized red. They are now plastic and they are significantly darker. They're still a little bit off from a vintage Graflex color. A vintage Graflex is more like, almost like a dark blood red. Uh, not quite a scarlet red, but just, just a hair darker. This is more like a maroon color. It has a little bit of purple in there. And, but it still looks very nice. Uh, I think it looks better than the anodized red from the previous kit. Um, so that he, he, he did listen to criticisms there and he upgraded that, which is great. Um, I have not put my, my buns in there yet because I'm going to wait until I install this to do all that. But going on to the overall hill itself. Uh, it's nice. Uh, I mean, it has a nice weight to it. The pommel is vented for sound, but you know, there are covers and other alternate means if you don't want to see sound holes which I will be doing, and it's really inexpensive. The, uh, if you go on Etsy and go on Skywampa, the actual blank plate, if you want one that's blank, um, I think they sell one with the graphic stamping as well, but I just want the blank one. Um, it's like $10 or like eight something. So uh, it's gonna be a little over $10 with uh, um, tax and shipping and stuff like that, I think. And then you can get rivet, hole, uh, rivet screws that are rented for sound. So you can do accuracy mods there. They're pretty inexpensive. Um, the Graflex box uh, clamp section, the box section here, nothing good or bad about it. I mean, they fixed the issue with the detail and then the lines there. The sun is kind of washing it out. I apologize. Um, they are a little bit deeper than our 2.0s. The 2.0s would kind of just fade away. Um, these ones are pretty nice and pronounced. Um, I've elected not to put the Mylar, reflective Mylar strip on here to make it accurate to Empire Strikes Back. I, I don't like it, I'm not gonna put it on there. Uh, you get to your uh, dummy slide switch here, um, which actually doesn't do anything. It's just kind of there for looks, there to uh, look pretty. Your uh, beer tab, still inaccurate. It's still the stepped beer tab. Um, I will be buying, and they're not expensive, a uh, more accurate beer tab. I know technically for Empire Strikes Back, I should be removing it entirely. However, I don't like seeing a random hole there. So I have decided to keep the beer tab. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And then you have your uh, little brass pins, which I think look very nice. I'm not entirely sure how accurate or inaccurate they are. I like them though. I'm going to keep them that way. Um, they've grown on me. Um, and they're, you know, they feel nice. They're really good quality. I see nothing inherently wrong with them. You get to your bunny ears. Love me the bunny ears. Uh, these are more of a satin finish when on a vintage, they're more of a chrome finish. I haven't decided if I want to swap these out for accurate ones or not. Um, I really don't see anything inherently wrong with these. And it does swivel and move like a vintage Graflex. Um, final thing I want to talk about in regards to the actual hill itself is the emitter shroud. Uh, it looks nice, but it's still inaccurate. The, it, this should be more of an S curve. It's still too shallow. Um, once again, I feel like that's something Corbanth by now should have corrected. I don't foresee that being a difficult thing to change. Um, but it's not too big of a deal. It doesn't really mess with the overall look hardly at all. Um, you really have to look and stare at this thing for a minute to notice that. But I've been looking at so many Graflex, you know, online and stuff like that in the history of them that, you know, I notice it. But it's not horribly distracting. I personally don't mind. Um, and then you have all your little uh, hex screws and still have your rivets and screws. I'm not going to upgrade those. I don't, I don't see the need. They're fine as is. But if you want to, it's pretty inexpensive to do so. So what do I think of just everything overall? I'm happy with it. Uh, I'm very happy with it. I'm happy to finally have this. Um, I've always wanted an Empire Strikes Back uh, Skywalker hilt, uh, Anakin Skywalker hilt, and I finally have one. Um, 
I, I should be sounding a little bit more enthusiastic, but as I said, just everything that's going on, I'm just happy to finally have it in my collection. Uh, this is the saber that has given me the most grief. This is the saber that has taken me the longest to get a hold of for some weird reason when it's actually the most heavily available one out there. Um, Corbanf really came through. Uh, when I got my refund from 89 Sabres, I purchased this the same night and I had the hilt three days later, which was fantastic. Part of that just because Corbanf's awesome and his shipping is usually pretty quick. Part of that is because I'm currently living in the same state as him. So that helps too. Um, <laughs> but... No, I, I, I like it. It looks nice. It's it's nice to finally have a, a Graflex in my collection. And I'm going to make this my little project, I think. I think this is the Saber I'm going to attempt to do my first install on. I think this would be a good beginning Saber for me. I think that this would be a good beginning Saber for anyone. Because um, even internal-wise, let's just show you the internals real quick. This is not a tutorial how to take this thing apart or anything. But I, I do... I want to kind of show what I'm talking about. Um, and yeah, so you undo the clamp and you unscrew and it comes apart. But that's not what we're here for. Um, but yeah, I just... And then you have your chassis that's in there, which I would have to undo the clamp and everything to get out. But I don't know. I just, I, I feel like that this is a very good saver for me to you know, attempt to do my first install. And then if I mess up on the install, I can always send it into someone and say, hey, do it for me, please. Um, but I think this would be a good beginning one for me. <clears throat> uh, I like it. I would give it an eight out of, eight out of 10. I'm docking points because there are still ac uh, accuracy issues and the new hope bag is pretty disappointing in my opinion. But overall, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to have this. Uh, I can't wait to start doing some work on it. I'm going to start with some of the um, accuracy mods with the pommel and the clamp and stuff like that. And then I think this summer I'll see uh, about going through the process of installing it myself. Uh, seeing if I can't do that. But uh, yeah, that's really all I have to say. Um... I, I do want to talk real quick, since this is probably going to be the last video I do for a little bit, since I'm about to uh, move and stuff like that. This, as I said in, in a previous video, this is uh, not a job for me, uh, this YouTube channel. Just a little side hobby, a little something I thought would be fun. Um, first of all, I want to talk about content, about, I'm not really sure, I was thinking you know, initially this started out as kind of just a Saber review channel. I'm thinking about branching that out and making it just a Star Wars, primarily Star Wars related channel in general, where we discuss certain things and I go over the history of certain things and we can talk and discuss and I can share my views and my uh, opinions on things like the films and the characters. And I, I think that could be a lot of fun. There's a bajillion Star Wars channels out there. So, um... But I think it would just be a little fun. I'm not here to get a bajillion subscribers or to monetize my videos. This is just a little fun thing for me to do from time to time. And I, I don't know. Uh, to all 11 of you or so who uh, follow my channel, what would you like to see me go over? What would you like to see on here? Um, what are some ideas that you have that can make this better? Um, what would you like my opinion on? Stuff like that. Uh, help me out because this is, I'm new to this. Uh, this is this is new to me. I've never had a YouTube channel, you know, where I've spoken and stuff like that before. So yeah, just uh, let me know. Uh, help me build this into something that could be really fun. And that's all I have to say. I hope all y'all have a great day and catch you later.